Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we are installing Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. Okay everyone, I've already taken a look at Ubuntu 18.04 and Kubuntu 18.04. Now I'm especially excited to take a look at Ubuntu Budgie. The reason why is because Ubuntu Budgie is actually a relatively new spin of Ubuntu and I've actually never tried it before. The first official version of Ubuntu Budgie was 17.10. Back in 17.04 there was an unofficial spin called Budgie Remix. And I have used the Budgie desktop environment before. It's the desktop environment that comes with Solus and it's actually developed by Solus for Solus. And I've taken a look at Solus Linux a couple of times on this channel and I really enjoyed it all the times that I have tried it. Now Solus, it's a rolling release distribution but their repositories are super locked down. The developers don't include some applications that they don't feel should be in their repositories. Some of those are applications that I use like the Rocket Chat desktop client. So since their developers are so close-minded inside of their walled garden, unfortunately, even though I love the design of Solus and I love that it's rolling release and I love Budgie, I can't use Solus because they don't offer some of the applications that I, that I use. But Ubuntu Budgie is Ubuntu with all of its repositories and PPAs and, you know, every application for Linux is probably going to work on Ubuntu in some form with the Budgie desktop environment on top. I am really excited to see what this looks like, and I've seen a whole lot of hype around Ubuntu Budgie online. The night that Ubuntu 18.04 came out, I was actually uh, participating in the torrents for Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie, and Ubuntu Mate, and the Budgie version had the highest demand to supply ratio. Um, my share ratio was the highest on Ubuntu Budgie, and I started all of the torrents at around the same time. So there are definitely lots of people out there that are excited to see this. I'm excited to see this, so we're gonna jump right in now and cut to the desktop. All right, and here we are on the desktop. I'm going to go ahead and turn my computer on. All right, and in a moment here, I will select my boot device. Okay, and I'm going to select my USB flash drive. Here we go. You can hit a key there for accessibility options, and after a few seconds, we should get the splash screen for Ubuntu Budgie. There it is. Okay. So this is the Ubuntu Budgie logo. Um, obviously, it's a mix of the Ubuntu logo with the Budgie logo, just like most of the Ubuntu flavors do. All right, and we've got a mouse cursor, we've got a bar at the top. And here we go. So we can either try Ubuntu Budgie or install straight away. This looks very similar to the standard Ubuntu installer, much more similar to the standard Ubuntu installer than the Kubuntu installer, which makes sense because Budgie right now is written in GTK, even though it's in the process of being ported to Qt for their next major version. Uh, we're going to click try because I want to adjust my screen resolution before we get into the installation. All right, we've got a mouse and here is the desktop. Okay, so Budgie, on Solus has recently been changed, or I don't know how recently. It's not set up like this anymore. It doesn't have a bar at the top. Um, it's got a bar at the bottom, and Budgie on Solus looks very similar to Windows. Ubuntu Budgie keeps the, what I consider the, the classic Budgie feel, um, even though I never even used Budgie back when it did look like this. We've got our welcome screen here, um, which I assume will still be there after we're installed. Interesting, they've got a link to their uh, discourse forum right there on the welcome screen. And they're actually using the discourse logo. And on Ubuntu Budgie's website, you can see they're sponsored by discourse and by DigitalOcean and some other popular companies. Ubuntu Budgie is very popular right now. Oh, that was a nice animation. So right here, we've got an install now button, uh, which I assume will not be there after we install. Before we do that, we are going to adjust our screen resolution. So at the top right, we can open up the sidebar here. At the bottom of the sidebar, we can open up our settings. And if we go to desktop, maybe this wasn't where we needed to go. All right, so I knew how to get to the settings. I don't know where to go to adjust my screen resolution exactly. At the top left, we've got a menu with all of our applications. Screen, uh, here we go, displays. All right, so the search function works pretty well. Uh, what is this? Is this just, okay, this is just the GNOME setting center. Interesting. So they use the GNOME setting center for hardware settings, and then they've got their own setting center that's just for the look and feel of your desktop for Budgie. So under devices, we've got our displays. We are going to change this to 1080p for you guys. We'll apply. Hmm. There we go. Uh, keep this configuration. That took a second to go through there. By the way, this theme looks very nice. It's um, sort of a flat theme. It actually looks a little less flat than the soulless theme, but it does look nice. 
So now that we've got that sorted, we will install now, and we'll see what happens here. I like this desktop background. It's a cool desktop background. Oh, and we've got a clock right here, I just noticed, and a calendar on our desktop. Um, that's not selectable. It's not like a widget in KDE, but uh, probably Conky or something if I had to guess, something similar to it. All right. They've got a link to the release notes. If you want to read them, we will just click continue. And we've got our keyboard layout. This is pretty much just the regular Ubuntu uh, installer, just with a, a blue theme instead of the, the orange one. We're going to use our normal installation. We are going to download updates and install third-party software. And we should be probing our hard drives. All right, so we've got several options here. We can, we can replace our current Ubuntu installation with Ubuntu Budgie, and it's going to keep our interesting, wow, so our documents and personal files, which is on its own home partition, um, would be kept. System-wide settings would be cleared. Um, that's the first time I've seen an option like this in an installer. And I know this is the Ubuntu installer, so maybe the regular Ubuntu installer would do something like this as well, but I've never seen um, an Ubuntu installer actually recognize that I've got a home partition and offer to keep that home partition before. Um, we can also erase Ubuntu 18.04 and reinstall. We can resize that and install Ubuntu Budgie alongside it. Um, or we can erase the whole disk. We're actually going to do something else, as I usually do. And we're going to make our own just partition layout here. Our 256 gig SSD, we are going to use that as an ext4 file system. We'll format it at root. Um, I do want to say this theme, even though it looks nice, I am getting a little confused here. Like, it's very hard to see what is highlighted right here uh, because it's a lot of, of light colors on top of light colors with not a lot of separation. Even these boxes, you know, they've got lines underneath them, but there's no lines on top of them, so I don't know where the hitbox ends uh, without looking at my cursor. It is a little bit, I mean, you can see right here when we hover over this, we've got a shadow on the left and right side a little bit, and then a big shadow on the bottom. There's nothing on the top. Uh, to show you where that separation is between this box and, and the background above it. This is an example of non-functional design. Um, it looks cool, kind of, but I am getting a little confused at where I need to be clicking. All right, this is going to write over our SSD with a new root partition before it will let us continue. Um, and then we're going to select our hard drive. Now, see down here, it looks like this change button is grayed out. Uh, that, that gave me pause for a second as well, because that change the color of that word looks more similar to this grayed out plus button than it does to this not grayed out minus button. And this change button is not uh, not really shown as a button like the revert button over here is. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with their inconsistent theming. Uh, but we will select ext4 file system formatted, mount it at slash home. All right. And with that, we will install now. We'll leave the bootloader at the default location. Continue. All right, and we've got our time zone, all the usual Ubuntu stuff, your name, your computer's name, password, and we'll see what uh, display manager they use by requiring our password to log in. Uh, and here is our slideshow. So the arrow to proceed is at the bottom right rather than in the middle, like normal Ubuntu. So Ubuntu Budgie is a community-driven Ubuntu flavor featuring the Budgie desktop environment. I told you guys that already. They do use GNOME applications like we already saw with the settings thing. And we've got, oh wow. So they actually, well they give you a screenshot of the side panel in case you didn't know it was there. They don't tell you how to get there, they just say that there's a side panel here. Okay. Uh, they do put Chromium here by default rather than Firefox. Um, is Firefox installed by default at all? No it is not. Uh, but Chromium is. Wow, that's interesting because Kubuntu that I looked at yesterday, it included Firefox, even though KDE has their own web browser called Falcon. Um, they didn't include Falcon, they included Firefox because that's the standard for uh, Ubuntu distributions to include. But Budgie just throws the standard out and includes Chromium instead of Firefox. That's interesting. I actually do use Firefox as my web browser, so I'll be installing that later and uninstalling Chromium. We do get LibreOffice by default which is normal. We've got uh, Rhythmbox and GNOME MPV for media browsing. Oh, had a little hiccup there. We've got, looks like a GNOME photo viewer installed. It's hard to tell with these icons because this is a custom icon theme. Um, like this is not the normal Rhythmbox icon. So 
if they weren't listing the names of the applications here, I actually wouldn't know what these are. Because once again, the icons look cool. They all, you know, they got the rounded corner thing going on, like apps on a phone. Um, but I know, like, I know what the MPV icon is supposed to look like, but I wouldn't be able to tell which one of these is GNOME MPV because they're using their own custom icon theme. Um, once again, not super functional. GNOME software is what they use for their software center in Ubuntu Budgie, which is very interesting because in Solus, Solus has its own software center. That The last time I used Solus, it was very nice. I know it's changed since then uh, to be more like GNOME software. But yeah, Ubuntu Budgie, since it can't use Solus as software center because it uses a completely different packaging format, um, it uses GNOME software instead which is already working for normal Ubuntu. All right, so thanks for choosing and installing Ubuntu Budgie. They link to their Google Plus community and their Launchpad bug tracker. All right, and it looks like they've got an emoji within their, their opening slideshow there. That's interesting. Uh, so on the left side here, we've got a dock, which is kind of cool. We've got, uh, ah, so this is just going to open up the installer. I wonder if I open up something that's not in there, like Archive Manager. Okay, so this doc does show everything that you have open, as well as providing a place to put other things. Yeah, like our file browser here, which looks like looks like GNOME files, actually. Top left. Yeah. Yeah, that's a GTK app. Yep, that's Nautilus. Nautilus with a different icon. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. I do want to say the the theme, even though I like the desktop background at the start, the theme is starting to grade on me now that I'm seeing uh, everything together. Like when I open this up, this little, this gradient going to the left. Oh, here we go. Installation is finished. We'll go ahead and restart. Um, the gradient behind the icons on the dock is a little, a little bit much. All right, let me remove that flash drive and press enter. So yeah, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just not a fan of the the theme they use for Ubuntu Budgie. Even though I think it does look very cool, and I wish that uh, the more desktop environments or more distributions packaged cool-looking themes. There's a very fine line you have to walk between looking cool and being functional and just looking ridiculous because you've got too much crazy stuff going on. Uh, we'll type in our password though, and it looks like LightDM for our display manager, which is interesting because that's what Ubuntu used back when it had Unity, but now it uses GDM. But Ubuntu Budgie uses LightDM. All right, and here is our Budgie welcome screen. Hmm. Wow. Please choose a topic to get started. Okay. Cool. So we can actually. Oh, wow. This is very interesting. We've got a button to remove Chromium and to install Firefox, which I just said I was going to do. Let's see how these work. Applying changes. Is it going to prompt me for my password? Um, if I click remove here, how's it going to handle more than one thing? Uh, it also lets you get Google Chrome and Vivaldi, both of which are proprietary closed source applications. They're both based on Chromium, but they just put Chromium and Chrome right there, right next to each other. Do they explain really what the difference is? They say it offers um, integration with Google's proprietary services, but they don't actually explain... Well, they, they say open source here. Hmm. I could see this being confusing for new users. Um, or I guess I could see people uninstalling Chromium and installing Chrome just because they, they've heard this name before and they might not know what this is. Um, also, I think it's interesting that we're using unmodified icons for Chromium, Google Chrome, and Vivaldi. Those are the, the stock actual branded icons. And then Firefox, we're using a custom icon that's part of Ubuntu Budgie's theme. So these three have their brand identity intact, whereas we're throwing out Firefox's brand identity. Um, interesting choice, <laughs> Ubuntu Budgie. But we can go through here. It's going to walk us through. Okay. can be found later in the menu system tools. Where's the menu system tools? Oh, in this menu under system tools, I guess. Okay. And Budgie desktop settings are there. All right. Interesting. This is a very, this is a thorough getting started thing little wizard. The super key is your Windows key. For Mac keyboard, just the command key. Thank you for explaining this, because I know this, but lots of people don't know that. Um, they, they do call it the super key here and not the meta key. I usually call it the meta key, but, you know, that's great that they actually, they just lay out, all right, this is what we're calling it. This is what key it is. That's great for new users. Um, so it gives you lots of desktop shortcuts. Open applet section. So if I do super A, Oh, so I can open up the sidebar by doing that and not have to move my mouse up to the top right. Cool. And then in, we'll switch to the other tab. Cannot go directly between them. Looks like it's going to close and open every time I hit one of those. Well, that's pretty neat. 
Um, all right, workspaces is something I use extensively. Control, Alt, Right. It's gonna switch. Okay, so we do have workspaces set up by default. Do we have any sort of visual indicator up in our panel of which workspace we're on when we're not um, actively switching? Welcome to Quick Note. Replace this text with your notes. Wow, we've got a note-taking, a note-taking applet. That's not. Uh, is that built into Budgie, or is that like a plugin or something? I don't know what those buttons do. Oh, just an undo button for your notes. Wow, I'm afraid to click on some of these. What does this do? Oh, that's nightlight. Places, all right. Yeah, I can see uh, how this doesn't look quite as visually pleasing as a more polished desktop would. And the thing is, Budgie on Solus looks extremely visually pleasing. I, this is not knocking on Budgie. Everything about the theme, like I said, that is Ubuntu Budgie's doing. All right, so I'm not seeing anywhere where we can actually see which workspace we're on or drag windows between workspaces other than just switching. We can we can move to another workspace here, which looks just like it does on uh, on GNOME or, I guess, Mate. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to keep going through here just because I'm intrigued. Software updater, that is the regular Ubuntu one. Restricted extras. Drivers. Okay, so they make it, you can open up. Ah, NVIDIA graphics card detected. I was just going to install the, the proprietary NVIDIA driver. NVIDIA may have drivers for your card that can boost performance. Yeah, you bet they do. So we've got 390. We'll go ahead and apply that. So this is the same uh, driver installation process as you get with regular Ubuntu. Once again, proprietary or open source? Okay, so here they explain what the difference is between proprietary and open source. Ah, and they even they even give a place where you can oh there's a button where you can just add the repository right here one click for the Ubuntu graphics driver for the updated one. That is this is very I don't want to call it slick because this is a lot to take in. Uh, but this is extremely functional. This is really great. Um, yeah, maybe a little cluttered and, and maybe overwhelming if you don't know what any of it is, but uh, this is this is neat. Optional tasks, backups, Deja Dupe. I've used Deja Dupe in the past. I use Back in Time right now. Uh, firewall, set up users, cool. And they include a graphical firewall front end. Oh, they well, there's a button you can install it with, at least. Interesting, system specifications. This is cool. More, more distributions should have something like this, because so many times I just want, like, you know, Macs have that About This Mac button in their system menu. I always have to install hardware info or, you know, I have to install little utilities just to show me basic things like how much RAM I have. Yeah, this is great. That That is, I highly approve of, of this system, uh, system specifications panel. Can we just search system in here and get that? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, about? No, we can't. This is similar. This is Ubuntu's version or GNOME's version of that, I guess. And then I actually, I like Budgie's version better they've got here. This sidebar overlays on top of the the content of this window, which is a little strange. All right, well, we're gonna close that. I've seen enough of their getting started window. So since we uninstalled Chromium and installed Firefox, oh, huh, Tilex, I've never used this terminal emulator, uh, but our Firefox is not, in the dock by default, so we can search for it in our menu there. This looks like a menu for Mate or XFCE or something. I think it's just the normal Solus menu, though. But if we open up Firefox, and, uh, yep, it, it opens up, it works. Oh, that's right, we need to change our, our display. Sorry, I should have changed the screen resolution earlier so that when I was going through all of that stuff, you would have been seeing it normally and not squished. It opened up the uh, the welcome screen and I completely forgot about it. Sorry about that. So here we go. This is what everything looks like when it's not squished. And it says the proprietary driver is quote unquote in use. Of course it's not actually in use until we restart our computer at this point. Um, so control alt left and right to get between desktops. That's a little, little bit slow. Oh wow, we can make more. So that's like, that's like GNOME where you can just keep well, it's not exactly like GNOME, because GNOME doesn't let you have empty virtual desktops. Um, can we go to the left further? No. All right. Well, that is an interesting way to handle virtual desktops, I'll say. What is this? Oh, that's... Um, I think this is this icon's supposed to be a cup of coffee, and this will keep your display from going to sleep. 
Hmm. Well, this is a lot to, to take in, um, but this is Ubuntu Budgie. This is what it looks like in case you've been wanting to try it out. Yeah, I would highly recommend uh, if you're looking into Budgie that you just try out Solus because if they've got all the applications you use, it's rolling release, which means you're going to get updates way faster than you'll get on Ubuntu. Their package manager on Solus is like dummy proof as well, and it's just it's a great experience uh, using Budgie on Solus. But if you do need an Ubuntu base, um, if you need more more software selection, and if you want maybe a, a default setup that's a little bit more you know packed with features like all this stuff up here, I can tell you all that stuff is not jammed into your panel by default in Solus. If you want all these neat little trinkets to play with, and you want all these you know dock and everything, I'm curious what dock that is by the way. Yeah, nothing comes up when we search panel budgie applets. Okay. I'm guessing we've got a few of these. So we can install more applets right from here. We've got already... Oh, so this is what I was talking about, this clock here. We can remove... Everything's really one click here. All right, well, that's still there, but install it again. We do have a Hot Corners applet um, enabled by default. Huh. Wow. Yeah, this is this is just a lot um, to go over in one little little overview video like we're kind of doing. Show a different wallpaper on each workspace. Workspace overview applet. That sounds like something I want. So if I install this, yeah, it doesn't show up automatically. We do have some different themes. If you don't like this theme, we do have some different themes uh, that you can switch to right there. I'm a big fan of the arc themes. You can change your icon theme here if you don't like the crazy icon theme that we have. You can change that. There's our vanilla gnome icon theme. What is this then? Yeah, it's the same thing. Hmm. I think this is our Ubuntu theme maybe. Cool, at least everything is configurable here. You know? Oh wow. Huh. Yeah, there is plenty to configure. Um, Budgie, I've heard Budgie described as a version of GNOME that actually still has options. Um, it's similar to GNOME in its setup, especially when you've got a, a setup like this with a top bar and a dock and everything. Um, but it still has, it's got way more customizability than GNOME built in. So yeah, that is very interesting. I'm, uh, I think I've, I've spent enough time looking at it on video right now, but I will continue uh, looking at this and, and seeing what else is here. If you do have any questions about Ubuntu Budgie that you want me to look into for you, or if you have any suggestions or things I can do, head on over to nerdonthestreet.com. Um, I've actually got forums you can talk to me on, and yeah, I make lots of other videos about Linux as well. You can see I just made my Ubuntu and Kubuntu videos the past couple of days. So check that out if you're a new viewer, but for now, that's all I had to show you guys in this video. So I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd of the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.